Hi everybody, today we're looking at in-game and startup menus. Starting as always with our infographic, you remember we created our first map, our plugin, our Lyra experience definition, our character that we reskinned a couple of times. Now we want to have menus around it. Front-end menu, startup menu, in-game menus. That is the gray box here. So let's zoom it in a bit. Central is something called the Lyra user facing experience definition that will create a menu item. We need an empty world that does nothing but showing our screens, our menus. Then we need a new Lyra experience definition because every one of the, of the levels needs one. And from there, we have something called the Lyra front and state component that then adds a couple of widget graphical elements to the whole UI. Same thing happens actually a bit later with the in-game menu where we have another two um, activatable widgets that are directly coupled to our default Lyra experience definition that we created a couple of videos ago. Okay, looking here into the menu, we're starting with the, with the letter L and I will leave that open the whole time simply because there's a lot of small steps really. And yeah, first creating startup experience, startup screens, and then the in-game menu. So let us start. First thing, uh, actually first thing, <laughs> I will add a, a player start uh, because otherwise we are always starting in the air and having to fall a couple of seconds. So that is side thing. First thing, we are creating a new data asset. Right click, misc, data assets. And here we need a Lyra user facing experience definition. Okay, let's call it uh, DA, BA, use face expdef, some kind of abbreviation. Uh, not sure. Okay. So let's open that. What does it need? It needs a map. So the maps are a standard map that we created, our default map. So let's select that. The experience it needs is our experience that we defined also a couple of videos ago, standard experience. Here we can define things if we want to see it in the Lyra startup screen, we don't, so we leave that, but Lyra will find that actually. So then we need a couple of widgets. Just Lyra activatable widgets are graphical elements, UI elements. For that, we need a new folder called UI. And then we look for them in the main content folder of Lyra. First thing is W Lyra startup. Oops, compiling something. Lyra startup. Ah, here it is. We take it, copy it to our UI folder. Okay, be done. Next thing is W Lyra frontend. We also need that one. Same thing, copying and then entering the UI folder and renaming it so that we can find it again. I will just replace the Lyra here with BA underscore. And here, okay. So these are graphical elements. In theory, you can open and edit them. These are very dynamically generated um, things. You can, of course, um, exchange, for example, the masks here, or you just delete them and then use uh, images and then text as you want. Um, I don't do it here for this video, but that is kind of simple. Then we are opening our front end widget. And here, play Lyra, now we don't want that. So just to the right, enter text as a filter. And here you have this button text, let's say, play BA game in my case. Okay. And of course, something should happen when you click on one of the buttons. Let's look at the graph. So we have here the one activated, and then we have a couple of events, one per button, and it's always just calling another widget class really. Here we need to define one single variable of the type Lyra user facing experience. We call it U face experience, short one, right click variable, U face experience. And here I just search for face thing. Here we go. That is something we want to set on activated so that it really points to the right user facing experience, the one that we just created. So just lock it in, say it's set, reconnect it, and 
just select the data asset that we just created here. Here it is. And here we go. So let's compile that. Then going down a bit, we want to change what happens if somebody actually clicks on this start game button. At the moment, we're using this two-step Lyra menu. We want to do that in the future. So let's just grab that event and connect it to a bit of blueprint code that again, we get out of the web, copy pasting it. So right click here, new tab, and then copying here, yeah, close it and put it in here. So yeah, the event is not so useful, a custom one, let's delete it. And here you see, uh, let's reconnect. It's really just opening a level that is using the variable that we just defined. And then it sets the input mode to game only. That's important. Otherwise, um, the menu is still grabbing that. So compiling, saving, and we are finished here. So we need to connect these two together. And for that, we need an empty level. So let's enter our maps folder, right click level, we want to call it M front end menu. Okay, let's open that. That is our default level from now on. You can also set that in the project settings. And that is black at the moment, but we want of course, that it loads some things. For that we need to create a Lyra front end state component. That's another blueprint. Right click blueprint Lyra front end state component. Select that and let's call it BP BA front end to comp something. That's the comp, okay. And let's have a look what it is. It needs a press start screen class. What should happen on the start screen? Yeah, or startup, of course. And the mainstream, we also created that already. That is our, oops, our front end class. So that is binning that together. That's it for the moment. So let's compile, save, and close. Good. Next thing, we want to have a Lyra experience definition simply because every level needs one. So blueprint class, Lyra experience definition, Select and let's rename it somehow. BP BA uh, start screen. Okay. So this is the one that's to be loaded with our level that is empty at the moment. So let's set it as default gameplay experience. Then we can open it. And you already know this, we need to add one game feature to enable. That is the name of our directory minus the content. We don't have a pawn here, nobody's running around, but we need some actions, one action. And that is something where we have to add a component. So I expand and add an array to the component list. So the actor class is of Lyra game state. Copy pasting that again. The component class is our start screen that we just created. So be a there. And it's a client component, not a server component. So that should be fine. So let's test it out. Yeah, we are playing it. We say play the game. We have options, credits, and quit. And let's play the game. Okay, here we are. That was from our last map, from our risk in tutorial, and looks good, I would say. So we did not do a lot of customization. Most small thing we could do is kind of having a look at the credits. That is one of the things that is visible here. So just go to content. It's another widget. So W underscore credits. We copy it again to our UI folder. Here we go. And yeah, let's rename it BA code credits. Oops, gone. That's back again. 
So let's open it. Again, graphic, you can change that definitely. Um, what they're doing here is having a developer 1 to 100 in a loop. We don't want that. Uh, I just decouple it and, and kind of hard code it in this pseudo HTML here. Um, yeah, I think in reality you would do something more elaborate or just don't do any dynamic things, just hard code the credits in it. So, Bastian Dev for this point. And that's enough for the moment. Compile, save, close. Uh, can also be closed. So now we have to tell what happens if somebody presses the credits button. So let's go here to our button. Let's, let's look at the graph, credits button. Yeah, at the moment it's a widget class, that's the old credits. We want to have our new one, obviously. So let's look for credits. Here's our BA credits, that's a new one. Pointing to it and compile and save. And that's it already. Let's try it out. Yeah, we have a couple of things. Here's the options. We'll look there later in that. And here is our credits. And you see now, okay, credit title is changed accordingly. So quite easy to change. And let's quit. Looks good, but we don't have an in-game menu. So if you press escape or the standard key, nothing happens. So how do we do that? Again, we need two activatable widgets from, from Lyra. One is default HUD layout. Default HUD layout, here it is, copying it to our UI folder. And the other one is the Lyra game menu, same thing. See, we're re 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 reusing a lot of Lyra. Using it as a toolbox, copying here. Go to UI, rename both. We find it again, just will replace the Lara with BA underscore. And the next is this default. I can replace the default with BA. Okay. So now we have to link these two widgets with our standard user experience definition. We open it, go to actions, add another component, and say add widgets. Here, we have to point to our HUD layout. So in the layout, we add one item and say here our BA HUD layout. And thinking about the layers, a couple of layers are predefined. And in our case, that is the UI.layer.menu. So one down here. Here we go. So the layout should sit on the layer menu. We compile that, save it, and close it. Now we go to our hard layout, and we have to define what happens if somebody presses the escape key, so our standard key for opening. And you see actually here's the escape menu class. That should of course be the second widget that we defined, our game menu. So PA game menu. Okay, so actually the graph here is empty and shall, shall stay empty, so nothing here. We compile that, save it, and close that one. Last thing, thinking about how to quit the game. So let's open up again our game menu. Here we go. We have two options here, quit game and stop playing editor. Kind of the same for us, so both should quit the game. And here are the two events doing it. The one is quit button, the other is return button, same for us. We take both events and we'll connect them with something we again copy from the web. Just open the tab, copy it from there. And here we go. Casting in, okay, that event, that is useless. So we just grab, let me zoom a bit around. Uh, I'll click to remove the connection, make a bit of space for them, and zooming in the other direction, and reconnecting in. So reconnect that, and that, and you see it's just show confirmation, yes or no. Can I edit text here. If it's confirmed, we quit the game. Simple, simple. We 
compile, save, and close the whole thing. Let's try that out. We play, we have our startup screen, we play the game, we press escape, and we see our in-game options. Yeah. Then, of course, we have the quit option. We can say yes or no to quitting it. We say no, we expect to go back. Yeah, we are. And then we quit the game and say yes, and it's done. So, menus are finished, looking good. Stay tuned. We will release more videos on this channel. Bye.